Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So recently I released a video of creating fractured walls in destructive environments inside of uh, mixed reality using the quest. And one thing I forgot to do was show you actually how to use the MetaXR uh, mixed reality utility kit. And it turns out a lot of people don't actually know that this is a thing. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at it and then I'll show you how you can kind of use it. It's super simple. Um, so if we head over to the MetaQuest documentation, this is be linked in the description. And then we've got the Mixed Reality Utility Kit. So this was added for 5.3.2, and it's already been updated twice, so there's two versions for us to use. And what it is is essentially a tie-in subsystem to MetaXR. So if you're using MetaXR, everything in here can be done with that plugin alone. However, if you've used MetaXR and you have this plugin as well, it kind of just helps you take it and elevate things further. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in this. It's a massive document and a release. But what we want to do is we want to take a look at some of the main features, um, which I've been using as well, which is quite nice. So if we start off by taking an overview, we see that Mixed Reality Utility Kit provides a rich set of utilities and tools on top of the scene API to perform common operations when building spatially aware apps. This makes it easier to program against the physical world and allows developers to focus on what makes their app unique. So it allows for scene information data, geographical helpers such as anchor points and makes things a bit more improved from the MetaXR plugin, and then gives us some development tools as well. Um, prerequisites, you do need Unreal Engine 5.3 installed, as you probably do. And then you also need to have the MetaXR plugin installed as well. So that'll be in your marketplace folder. I've got videos on that in, I'll link it in the description and on the channel. So if you go to your C drive and then we find program files, we can look for Epic Games 5.3 engine plugins you should have a marketplace folder if you set up the MetaXR plugin in the past and in here we would just add the mixed reality utility kit so the same place and they kind of work together so to download that you just want to come down to the installation link and then when you do mixed reality utility kit you'll find that it's linked here you might want to make sure that the 62 mixed reality utility kit version 62 if that's what you're using and the meta xr is both on the same version i haven't tried with different ones but it's possible it could cause some issues so just make sure you're using 62 and 62 i believe of both just makes your life a little bit easier so the mixed reality utility kit if we hop over to a project that i'm working on so this project is part of the Mixed Reality tutorial series that I have exclusively up on Patreon, where we're building an AR app using the Quest 3. And I've already got this plugin installed, as well as the MetaXR Mixed Reality Utility Kit. So if we go to Project Settings, we can go down to our MetaXR, and we'll see that it's the exact same process as before. We've got all of our information in here. However, we also have a Mixed Reality Utility Kit which we can actually go into. And you'll see that we've only got one option. So if we take a look at it, it goes, when world locking is enabled, the position of the VR pawn will be adjusted each frame to ensure the room anchors are where they should be relative to the camera position. This is necessary to en ensure the position of the virtual object in the world would not get out of sync in the real world. So basically it allows a mixed reality utility kit to calculate positions in space and a little more easier than what the MetaXR plugin can do by itself. It is important to note that they both work in unison. So everything that the MetaXR plugin does is gonna be the, set, the same setup. You'll still need to enable anchor support and scene support and pass through within the MetaXR plugin, but the, Meta, the Mixed Reality Utility Kit will just talk to that instead. So what you can do is in the default, you would typically go up here and then you do, uh, I believe it's scene. Oculus XR scene actor, and that would allow you to take your scene data from your project and then populate the environment with it. Uh, I think this is the right one. Let me double check. Scene actor, yes. So in here, we've got activate room, scene plane, 
And if we open this down, you can see that it allows us to give specific static meshes to walls, uh, floors, ceilings. The problem with this is it's just a static mesh, which means doing any kind of modification to it is going to be an absolute nightmare. You're kind of restricted. And this is where I found the main power of the mixed reality utility kit comes into play. So if I delete this, we can see that I actually have one in my scene already. And it's called the Mixed Reality Utility Kit Anchor Actor Spawner. You can find this up here as well. So Mixed Reality Utility Kit. And then there's an anchor. So Mixed Reality Utility Kit Anchor Actor Spawner. You can drag this into the scene. And this works the same way. However, the power that we get from this is instead of having static meshes, let's say we've got the walls, uh, wall face, they're actually actors and they're individual actors, which means rather than having a mesh represent your wall, you can now have a blueprint, which I've got here, and then it's actually a destructible wall. So we can see in here that we've got a plane made of a whole bunch of meshes, and we can actually use this in our project to spawn in at runtime. So this in itself is pretty much the most powerful thing that I've come across with the Anchor Actor Spawner. It makes your life easier, it makes game development easier, and it makes setup so much better. Uh, we've already got a, we've also got a couple of options here. So we can do match aspect ratio, and then we've got scaling, as well as procedural fallback meshes. So let's say we're using, uh, I think the couch doesn't have anything applied. Yep, so this array of actors is empty. So we fall back to a procedural mesh. So if it's not specified a specific actor, then it falls back and it'll just create a box procedurally around these objects if the headset detects that those are set up in the scene for us. So it's really powerful. And then you can actually apply blueprints. So you can see here the wall is actually one meter by one meter. However, your physical space might not be. And that what that does is the mixed reality utility kit and character spawner can use a scaling mode to stretch that mesh across the actual scene data. So you don't have to have specific meshes or actors for specific wall lengths. It'll actually procedurally generate that for you and stretch them to match as much as possible. I found this is really cool and it works really well. So I definitely recommend checking that out. Um, for everything else, it seems like it works a lot of the same way as the original content. However, if we go into my game manager, you'll see here that we actually have a subsystem we can access instead. So we could get, uh, I think it was room data or scene. Can't remember exactly which one it was from the mixed reality, uh, the Meta XR plugin. But in this case, what we can do is use the mixed reality utility kit system and we can actually get the current room we're in. So if you've used your headset lately, you'll notice that we actually have the ability to change rooms in our house. So we can have a living room, a kitchen, a sitting room, a bedroom. This actually allows us to get that data. So by using the Mixed Reality Utility Kit subsystem, so subsystem, we can actually get a whole bunch of more data from this. So Mixed Reality Utility Kit, we've got a whole bunch of information as well, binds, so we can detect if our room's actually set up for us. And then we can actually load data in and scene data and spawn interiors. So in this example, during this part of the course, we're actually spawning in a main menu. So we don't need to see our room. So we have spawn on start disabled. And then what I do is we go into here and then once we're able to spawn that room, we simply get the actor of class, which is in our level. So that's referring to this one here. And then we simply spawn the interior. And what that'll do is it'll take all of the blueprints that are in these arrays and it will make them, it will spawn them in and make them visible for us. And then we can actually call that here. And simply from there, all I'm doing is I'm getting the mixed reality utility kit subsystem, getting the current room we're in, because I don't really care whereabouts we are in the house. And then we're just getting the anchors label. So in this case, if our headset's set up with scene data, it's gonna be looking for our table. So here I've got a table. There's no blueprint attached, but this will be created in the headset. And if it detects a table, we're gonna 
loop through the array, so there might be multiple, and then we're just going to get the location and spawn an actor in that point. So there's a lot of, a lot of cool stuff you can do with this, and the idea is to treat it the same way you would with the Meta XR plugin. So it's definitely worth taking a look at and changing over. There's way more stuff in here that we've got time to go over, to be fair. But there is uh, sample projects that you can take a look at. And then it's got all the information in here as well. And if I go down, uh, we've got a whole bunch of interfaces and then tools. So you can actually create procedural meshes and attach those to specific points. Um, Angry right, Spawner, which we've taken a look at. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other stuff. There's so much. Uh, Guardian Spawner, Blob Shadow Components, uh, Light Dispatches. So there's Demo Map. Oh, this is this is a cool thing as well. Is just because in the old version, the Mixture Utility Utility, uh, Meta XR plugin, you would need a reference directly to this blueprint. However, if you want to access any information from this, you can do it from any blueprint. So let's say my wall face, all we've got to do is make sure the utility kit subsystem. We can then get the room. So we can get current room and we can get all that information from anywhere to reference this specific blueprint and then control it. The only thing that I didn't find that it worked was that initial get current room or the anchor actor label from it. You've got to still then get the subsystem and go from there. And this part here, you've got to get the actual actor of class. So the one spawned in, if you want to directly tell it to spawn interiors. So you still need a reference to it. But yeah, I think that's going to be it. If you want to see how I've set all of this entire project up, there is a 13 part video series as of right now up on the Patreon mega thank you tier, where you'll be able to drop over there. It's three hours long and we get all the way up to this point in the project where you'll be able to actually take a look and go through that. However, if you just want any to help or hang out and chat, make sure to check out the Discord link below. I think we're almost at three and a half thousand people. So there's plenty of us in there to help you out if you need it. Um, yeah, I don't often ask, but make sure to like and subscribe. It really does help a lot. And we're trying to get those numbers up a bit higher. But until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then. All right, bye.